swallow it whole too. She can catch it out of the water and they swim up to 35 miles an hour, most of the time 20, but they can get that fast. Uh, so they can catch fish on the go. So that's why they eat fish, because they're really good at it. So Harper's asking, like, what kind of penguins are these? Oh, that's a great question. These are Humboldt penguins and they are native to the coast of Peru and Chile. And they live and swim among the Humboldt current, which is what they're named after. We have a question about what penguins' natural predators are. Oh, that's a good question. These guys don't have a whole, as many natural predators as some of the um, cold weather penguins. Uh, those guys are gonna suffer from seal predation, but they will also get a little bit of seal predation in there. Uh, every now and then they can get, become a snack for uh, them. Zoe's asking, if they all live in cold weather and why? That's a really good question. No, they don't all live in cold weather. You may notice that I am not wearing a parka. And that means they live in the same climate that we do. So these are called temperate weather uh, and they prefer the same climate that we do. Cruz is asking, how fast do penguins swim? Good question. Penguins swim, for the most part, they'll swim about 20 miles an hour, but they can get up to 35 miles an hour. Uh, and here at the zoo, when you come visit us, you can actually see some of that because we have a circular pool, so they can just keep swimming and keep swimming. And it's really fun for them. Sophia's asking, is it warm or cold here in the Penguin area? That's a good question. It's actually pretty warm. We usually keep it between 65 and 70 degrees. Uh, and that's, that's real comfortable for us, too. Okay, so Abe is asking, what are these penguins' names? These penguins' names, well, if you can see their name tags on their wings, you can see this is Gouda, and this is a girl. Pankewe is also a girl, and Patata is a boy. And when you come visit, you'll be able to see that all of the penguins have name tags. Uh, some of them have a shorter name because their name happens to be long, um, but they all have their name tags. You want that, buddy? Yeah, you do. No, you don't. Okay. Um, they all have their name tags, and that's how we tell them apart. And another trick is, if the tag is on the left, it is a girl. If it's on the right, it's a boy, so you can tell that as well. So, Sean's asking, what's their favorite kind of fish to eat? <laughs> that's a good question. So, this little fish is a herring, uh, and that is most penguins' favorite. You can see they got a little excited when they saw that. Uh, Piscato is a real good eater, and he'll eat just about anything. They also like these tiny silver sides. They don't like as much this capelin, <laughs> but the capelin is good for them. So this is kind of their broccoli. And uh, they will eat it. They just don't like it as much. No, I don't like it. 
We have a question about how much penguins eat every day. That's a great question. Penguins eat a varied amount every day. So seasonally, they're gonna eat a lot when they're nesting and a little bit when they're molting and a little bit in between. So right now, these guys, uh, most of these birds are not nesting, so they're gonna eat a medium amount. We usually feed our entire flock of 24 birds um, about 10 kilos, which is about 22 pounds a day. We measure it that way um, by the flock, but we do hand feed all of the penguins, so we know that everybody is getting something to eat. Aster's asking, how old do penguins get? That's a great question. The Humboldt penguins can live up to 30 years old. We actually have had a bird here that was 34 in the past, uh, and we have several birds that are 30 and 29. If you end up um, coming for a penguin encounter at the moment, you might get a chance to meet Mochika, who is 30 years old. Um, Shiloh's asking, do these penguins sleep, and where and how do they sleep? That's a great question, too. They do sleep. They're called diurnal, which means they are awake during the day and sleep at night. When they do sleep, they tend to sleep near their nest boxes or near uh, where their nest boxes would be depending on the season. So you'll find them kind of camped out on their own doorstep or in their own little houses. So Elsie's asking about the, the patterns. Barbara, can you tell us about why they're black on the back and white on their tummies? Yeah, that's a great question. So when penguins are swimming in the ocean and a predator swims underneath them and they look up with a white tummy, it looks like the staff. And then the other way around, when a predator looks down on them and sees the black back, they can't tell, it looks like the ocean. So it's camouflage for them. And then the spots on their chest are actually um, identify, it helps identify the individuals. <laughs> and we have a, a gray gull over here that is stealing snacks too. Her name is Whoopi Goldberg. Nolan is asking, what's the oldest penguin that we have living here? The oldest penguin that we have here is Mochika, and he is 30 years old. And the next one I think is 29, that's Crash. Is that pretty old for a penguin? That is pretty old for a penguin. The oldest one that I've known here uh, was 34, but she was really old. Dexter, who's four years old, is asking if some penguins are nice and some penguins are naughty. Uh, that, yes, that is actually true. Uh, some penguins are very nice and like to hang out. Mochika is one that really likes to hang out with people. Um, and then a lot of times our teenagers are naughty, which I'm sure some of you can relate to. Um, for example, these cheeses are considered teenagers and they love to play with keys and try to steal fish and uh, play with anything that's attached to your belt if you couch down. <laughs> uh, and so we would call that naughty, although we love them all whether they're naughty or not. You're naughty too. Yeah, you're naughty. You can't have it. So what, what kind of bird is this that just flew <laughs> over here? This little crowder uh, is a gray gull. Uh, she's one of our hand-raised gray gulls. We, um, we hand-raised them this last year uh, because we didn't have great success with our parent raising. And so we hand-raised two gray gulls last year. Uh, and when season comes around, hopefully we'll get more eggs to hand-raise. So Leah is asking, what do penguins feel like when you touch them? That's a great question. Um, they feel very solid. So this guy down here, he's got very soft feathers, but they're very tight. So it almost feels like skin. Um, but you can see they're actually tiny, tiny feathers. Uh, and it's very solid because they are like little torpedoes and they need to swim through the water and uh, be quick. So they have very compact bodies. You are, you get out of here. <laughs> Elijah's asking, how many species of penguins are there? Oh, that's a good question. I want to say 17. I might be wrong, though. Um, there are, I believe, four that live in South America, uh, and the rest are Antarctic penguins. So can you tell us a little bit about the range of penguins? There's some big emperor penguins. There's tiny little blue penguins. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a huge range in size of penguins and, and of habitat. Um, and so these guys are kind of a medium-sized penguin. The emperor penguin actually stands, I think, about five, five feet tall, um, maybe five and a half. And then the little fairy blue penguins, they're actually about this big. So they are smaller than the um, half grown chick of a humble penguin. Uh, and then a lot of the others are about this size or a little bit bigger. Um, you tend to have, the, Ar the Antarctic penguins tend to be larger, for the most part, uh, than the more temperate climate penguins. Well, that's not 100% rule. Are you full? Are you just hanging out? Let's see if I have any more. Nick here. wants to know if 
if penguins lay eggs like other birds? That's a great question. They do lay eggs like other birds. Humboldt penguins, on a normal season, <laughs> those are very dull. <laughs> They're very noisy. Uh, on a normal season, they will lay one to two eggs, although we do have a pair that frequently drops a third egg. Um, and so yeah, one to two every year. Every now and then, they will have a second nesting season midway through the year, so they would lay another second, uh, first or second egg. Um, Hattie's asking, how do penguins communicate with each other? That's a great question too. Penguins do a couple of different things to communicate with each other. First of all, they vocalize. Um, you may hear some vocalizing, we call it braying, when they're very loud, especially when you have two penguins doing it together. Um, you also can hear um, little noises that they make to each other when you have a bonded pair. You guys want that? You just mess around. Um, then they also communicate with body language. And so they'll, they'll uh, wiggle their, their flippers here, and she's actually doing it just a little bit. She's begging just a little bit uh, when they want something. Um, chicks will do that for mom and dad, and then our, all of our penguins will do that for us if we have a fish that they really want. So Sophia has a question for you, Barbara. How did you become a zookeeper? That's a good question. Uh, there is a lot of work in becoming a zookeeper. Uh, I went to uh, Warrior College, and I specialized in zoo science, but you can also get a degree in biology uh, or animal science or animal husbandry. Uh, but at this point, a four-year degree is pretty helpful. And then you want to pick an internship that will help you work with the animals that you really want to work with. Um, and I've been here at the Oregon Zoo for about six years, and I've been a zookeeper for about 20. Nicole wants to know, do penguin couples stay together? <laughs> that, that you, uh, yes, we like to say yes. But in reality, it's a lot more like people, where sometimes they stay together, their whole relationship, and sometimes they don't stay together, and they split up and they find new partners, and other times they go back and forth. So they're really uh, very dramatic. So Cole's asking, do penguins live in the Arctic? That's a good question. Penguins don't live in the Arctic. Arctic is in the north. Puffins live up there. Penguins live in the Antarctic, which is southern. So these guys are a southern hemisphere animal. Hey, don't bite me. No biting, naughty. Patata. Oops. So Barbara, how are Humboldt penguins doing in the wild? Humboldt penguins, uh, in the wild, they're considered vulnerable. So that means they're not doing very well. They are, they're not endangered yet, uh, but we're afraid that it's going to get that way. There's a couple of different reasons for that. Um, one is that they like to eat the fish that we also like to eat. Here at the zoo, we feed them the silver-sized herring and piglin, but in the wild, they eat sardines mostly, sardines and anchovies. And you may have heard that fish because we also like to eat sardines and anchovies. So we tend to be in direct competition with them. Uh, and then when those fish get overfished and they don't have a good year, there's not enough for the penguins and there's not enough for them to then lay their eggs. So you might have less eggs. So what, what's a way that people can help penguins? Um, that's a great, a great question. The way that people can help penguins, the biggest thing you can do, you're actually doing it right now, you're reducing your carbon footprint and you're staying at home. So that's really, really helpful. But on a regular, in a regular day, um, you can use your reusable products. Don't, don't get a straw with your soda or um, bring your own coffee cup because those things often end up in the ocean and that's really damaging to not just humble penguins but to all sea life. Um, another thing you can do is pay attention to the fish that you eat. Like I said, uh, we tend to eat the same fish that they do, but if we can avoid that, then that saves more for these guys. So uh, if you download the Seafood Watch app on your phone uh, from Monterey Bay Aquarium, then you will know what fish are overfished and what fish are good fish to eat. And that gets updated every year, so it's a really useful tool. Liam's asking, do penguins eat anything other than fish? Not normally. Um, they will, in the wild, they will eat what they want. <laughs> if they find something that seems interesting, they might try to eat it. Uh, but for the most part, they're going to go off and fish. Uh, they might run into a small squid or something like that. But we found here that they don't like squid. Um, and as you can see, they don't necessarily like all of the fish that we get. And Milo's asking, why are penguins so stinky? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> well, the answer to that is because they eat fish. <laughs> um, that fish gets processed and obviously turns into poop, and then you have fish poop. And so, yeah, fish poop is well stinky. Alexis and Camille are asking, why can't penguins fly? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, penguins can't fly for a couple different reasons. One, their wings are designed for swimming instead of flying, so their feathers are teeny tiny instead of long and full like our gray gulls. Uh, and that means that they can't fly because they can't lift their body with those wings. Uh, but what they, another thing that they can't, they, the reason why they can't fly is because their bones are not hollow like most birds. Most birds have hollow bones to help with that uh, gravity problem with the lift. Uh, but penguins have solid bones so that they can swim and not uh, bob up underwater. They need to be able to stay underwater. And so they are heavy on purpose. Don't fight me, well, oh, yeah. question about how these penguins got their names. Uh, the, the birds are usually named uh, by the keepers. We tend to pick a theme each year um, so that we kind of can remember how old each bird is. So we have five or six birds in here that are cheese, cheese names. Um, we have two that are, um, like Patata and Pescado are actually our youngest adult birds. And they are actually Spanish for fish and fish. And they are naughty, as you can see. <laughs> uh, so did these penguins, were, did they hatch here at the zoo? They did hatch here, yeah. These penguins hatched here. And if you look at this rock structure, and you can actually look into these little nest boxes, these are where our penguins are hatched out. That right there was blue and a squalus nest box. Um, and they um, they have two cheeks in it, so I'm uh, But yes, they are hatched out here. We haven't brought in penguins in years because we so uh, that doesn't mean that we won't in the future, but right now, yeah, the, the youngest guys are all hatched. So Kim is asking, what is the stuff that's floating in the water over here? Oh yeah, that's a great question. So that is actually a car wash material. We get that um, by bulk. We cut it up into different pieces because it makes a great nesting material. So the penguins will actually swim into the water and take them back to their nests and use them for nesting material. Uh, during the non-nesting season, we also use it for enrichment, which is something that basically gives these guys something to do to stimulate their mind and body. Uh, and they will be seen carrying them all over, so it's really fun. We have one more question here. Is yeah. How is the baby penguin doing? Oh, that's a great question. The baby penguin is doing so well. baby penguin uh, is actually living under Bonita and Mojito, uh, and it's gaining weight rapidly and very healthy. Uh, and so actually what we can do, if you want to try, this is something you would not get to do if you came through the rest of this special, we can actually go look and see if we can see the baby. Uh, there's no guarantees, but let's take a look. So follow me. I'm gonna go this way. I'll meet you around the rug. And they are the foster parents for our kids. This is going to be their first baby if they raise it properly, uh, their first baby that they sat. Um, and so the chick is really small. You may not be able to see it. Let's see if they would like a snack. You want a snack? No, I don't want that snack. Maybe you do. Um, so the chick is, I think, underneath Mojito, which is the larger penguin. He's our largest penguin. And Bonita is not a dainty lady either. <laughs> and they don't want any fish and that's okay. Uh, they did eat earlier. They do eat a lot of fish right now because they're feeding that baby. And so what we can do uh, is in the next, we'll, we'll post some videos of the baby as he grows. And then when you come to visit next time, this kid might be big enough for you to be able to see from the public area. So that's really exciting. So um, I want to thank you guys for joining us. This has been really fun for us. We miss you all. Uh, and if you, when you are done watching, if you want to click on the link, you can do some penguin activities. Uh, and then when you do those, take pictures and share them with us because we want to see uh, how much fun you're having. So thank you so much for joining us at the Oregon Zoo.